everyone welcome back to my channel if you're new here hey welcome what's up i'm carrera back with another video as you see <laughs> um but today from the title as you read and why you clicked on this video i'm gonna show you my cheat code for rolling swisher leaves or backwoods whatever so it's currently five o'clock in the morning. I wish I could show you, but I'm filming on my phone and I just can't sleep. <sighs> so I figured I would smoke and sleep after. <laughs> so if anyone remembers my other video on how I just like swishers and I don't really want to do like backwards or games or whatever. Um, but all the new people that I've been hanging around with this year all pretty much spoke backwards or Swisher Leafs or whatever. So I had to adapt and change a little bit, but Swisher, still on the game. <laughs> um, but I'm going to use the Swisher Leaf Honey ones. Um, I like the backwood bourbon and honey ones. I think that's what it is. It's like in a purple pack. I do like that one. Um, but I am just gonna switch camera angles like I did last time and so you can see how I roll it and then we can roll up and smoke together. <laughs> okay, I don't know why I'm like this. I already didn't smoke, but I think this, um, setup is pretty good. Uh, <laughs> I think, I hope. Um, but usually when you get Swisher Leafs, there's three in a pack. I um, already smoked one with my babe. So I actually learned over the summer how to do it. I know how to do it the correct way, of course. But um, this is the way that I like to finesse them just because it's easier for me. And since I smoke mainly because I have anxiety, um, this is just <laughs> what works for me, you know. And trying to roll while you have anxiety is trash but there's like you know it's excuse me <laughs> um there is this little like lip right here and this one is actually rolled the way that I like it so sometimes they'll either be rolled this way where they unravel this way or they'll unravel this way and I don't like when they unravel this way and the majority of them do unravel that way which but occasionally you'll get a whole pack that unravels the same way, which is really cool. So you just unwrap the leaf, of course. Oh no, this one has a rip in it. That's okay. And then you just throw out the guts. This does have a hole in it, but I think I can finesse that. All right, so I have my weed already grinded up. And I'm just going to place that in there. So I um, actually, since I'm going to roll from this side, so this will be closed and I don't have to worry about there being a hole there and like not smoking properly. And so just spread it out, of course, like you would a regular blunt. So what makes games and, or not games, sorry. What makes Swisher Leafs and Backwoods and stuff hard to roll is that they're kind of flimsy. But when they're not flimsy, they're super dry, so they break apart because, you know, it's a tobacco leaf. But if you, you know, if you if they're super dry, you can, like, wet them and stuff. But that makes them, you know, super flimsy again. So for me, what I like to do, especially when I have anxiety and I'm just, like, trying to roll a quick blunt, I just, you know, roll it up kind of like a sleeping bag. That sounds so funny. But really, that's how you do it. So I fold in, you know, the top part. And of course, you want to make the ending part where you smoke nice and thin. Not thin, but like the hole doesn't need to be, the opening doesn't need to be big or anything. So I just tuck and roll. Tuck and roll. <laughs> So, 
you've seen that I rolled it up or how I rolled it up and now just like a regular blunt you're gonna oops, now just like a regular blunt you're gonna just lick it close and I'll do that and then I'll come back on camera regular and then what I do I just shove my finger in there to like compact the end because it's not rolled up as tight as the bottom so it's pretty much rolled um she's good i'm gonna cut off the top sometimes so this is all done very firm it's not flimsy and i also when people like to roll up backwoods and leaves it's always flimsy and me being a perfectionist i don't like that sometimes mine are flimsy too and you just can't help it but like i need them to be tight okay back upright so that doesn't take very long um I also <laughs> learned how to do that because like rolling up anywhere is hard, <laughs> especially with the flimsy ass leaf. So let's just throw that out there. Um, so we're gonna smoke. Anyway, um, feel better now I've been up tossing and turning since five o'clock oh no sorry when I started filming it was like 5 30 I was like tossing and turning kept looking at my phone and I was like I haven't made a video in a while and I feel like I need to talk so I so back in bay i found out that the guy that i was dating had another girlfriend so since then i started dating somebody new which was it's kind of an interesting story <laughs> so me and my one really close friend Larissa pre-COVID in March went to this um club because I because she wanted to go see Alexis Sky. didn't really know who that was at the time but I was like yeah you know I'm down to go out I haven't gone out and mind you I was still dating the dude that cheated on me and in this <laughs> club like there was so many weird that things happening that night like that's like a whole story in itself but i ended up meeting somebody that night and no i know what you're thinking like oh you guys talked da, 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 you cheated no i <laughs> he asked me to dance and i was just like no i have a boyfriend and he can contest to that so <laughs> if any confusion happens no um, and, but we ended up being able, we ended up following each other. He asked me for my Instagram, gave him my Instagram, gave his, um, cousin my Instagram. Maybe not that night. Maybe same night. I can't remember, but ended up following each other on Instagram. Um, and he never like tried to push up on me. He was super respectful you know, kind of just was a gentleman, I should say. <laughs> and that kind of made me feel comfortable that like, I didn't get no crazy response from that or just like, oh, okay, that's cool. You know, <laughs> that was it. That's like the best thing that a woman could fucking hope for. But I met him there and he would just like, like my pictures on Instagram or whatever. Um, nothing crazy never even like commented or like you know said anything crazy just liked them and he had found out that I was single via I'm not sure either his friend or I mean or his cousin or social media or whatever but he found out I was single so he um hopped into my <laughs> dms and he asked me to, hmm. so 
this is I don't know why this is really hard for me to talk about because I feel like every time I talk about something and something is good something happens <laughs> you ever feel like that I think we all feel like that but um he hopped in my dms and at the time so timeline goes met him in march um broke up with jude in the beginning of may like very beginning um we started <laughs> we started talking in june me and him started talking in june um and at the time, I just, I don't know. I, we were talking, but like, I just, <laughs> I didn't know what I wanted at the time. And not saying that I was like out here being crazy, wasn't doing that. But like, he didn't press me to to be like in a relationship with him like yeah be with him but like it, it was different with him and I, I kind of don't know <laughs> it was different with him and I kind of don't know how to further even explain them so the very first time he asked me to hang out he asked me <laughs> if I wanted to have a Sunday fun day with him not only one like you want to hang out with me all day you don't even know the type of person i am to want to hang out with me all day but he wanted to hang out with me all day too it's a sunday like what are you gonna do on a sunday <laughs> like i've never really had like a sunday fun day right so like it piqued my interest i was like oh Yes. And first, actually, I, he asked me if I wanted to run errands with him and then have like Sunday fun day. And I was like, excuse me. <laughs> and as a woman, like, that's really cool. <laughs> like, we just want to be included in your life. Like, I don't care where you're going. You could be going to Home Depot. And if you say, babe, do you want to come to Home Depot with me? <laughs> Fuck yeah, babe. <laughs> Let me get this blunt. <laughs> Honestly, right? But I was just like really intrigued by it. So I was like, yeah, cool. But I ended up not being able to actually have a Sunday fun day. Um, I couldn't see him until like later in the evening. But like, and we ended up just chilling at his house which was like the coolest thing. And there was like no pressure to like do anything. And he just made me feel super comfortable. And then like now we've been together for six months and <laughs> dating is very scary. So That's how I met him. But it's six months down the road. <sighs> he knew coming into this, you know, I have kids. And I had explained to him what being with me meant. So, like, as a single mom, it's different with us. You know, we have kids. And, like, my kids are everything to me and being with me and if we end up you know falling in love and all of that that would mean like you would be in their lives too right eventually of course and it's hard and also also because I'm 29 and <laughs> <laughs> I'm 29 and I feel like 
you know, I don't want to be alone, but like, I'm not going to rush it either. But I don't want to waste my time on somebody that knew going into this what I have and what I require and what I would res would ultimately need in my life. And like being a mom, like that's really scary because especially dating somebody that doesn't have kids, right? So being a woman in general, you have to go through all of these things and all of these steps to ensure that you're safe and you're dating somebody who's safe and who's not going to abuse you or hurt you in any type of way. And that being said, whenever you have kids, you have to double check, triple check, because if something were to happen to your kids, that's your fault. You let this person in your life, even if you didn't know, you know, but you didn't do enough research or you didn't take enough time. I don't know, but there are some cases that you just don't know, but whatever the case is, is it's harder for us and it hurts a little more for us. So if you come into our lives and you come into my kids' lives and you, you know, it's not what you think it is and you end up leaving, like you're not hurting, you know, just me, you're hurting my babies too. So it's like, like, I don't want something that's going to last two months, six months. I want something that's going to last for the rest of my life. I want forever. I want, I want somebody to look at me the way my dad looks at my mom. And if I could ever get a picture to show you guys, I promise you I will. I've never seen anyone, anyone look at anyone the way my dad looks at my mom so I've seen it I know it's there but if someone comes into this and they decide that it's not for them it's not what they thought like you can't be mad you can't be upset I mean, of course, you're going to be upset and it's going to hurt regardless because you made a connection with somebody. That's gonna, a given. But in a um, general aspect speaking, you can't be upset at them because they didn't have kids. They didn't know. And you knew going into this you were taking a risk so it's harder to trust and to put all of your heart into something that you really don't know if it's gonna last that shit's hard and even if you date a guy with kids you gotta <laughs> Dating a guy with kids comes with a lot of stuff. You know, baby mama drama, if there is any. If there isn't, that's awesome. But, like, you know, you still got to deal with the baby mama and you got to deal with um, the kids. And not saying that that's a bad thing, but, like, there's a lot of extraness to that. But if you do fall in love with somebody who has a crazy baby mama and, like, 17 kids, or if you find out he's a deadbeat, like, <laughs> there's so many things. So many things. So I'm pretty fried. This weed is good. My nigga always gets really good weed. But I'm pretty fried. I really hope that you guys are all doing really well. And COVID is not kicking your ass. Because <sighs> COVID is kicking my ass. <laughs> no I'm having a really good time actually I'm having a great time in life um not everything is like great but I did find somebody that I want to try with and I 
have my beautiful kids and they are healthy and I have my family and I'm so thankful. So I am having a good time. <laughs> and so that's probably where I'm going to end with that random thing. <laughs> um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm kind of fried. And yeah, I hope you guys are staying safe and healthy. Um, that's the most important. So that's it for today. <sighs> See you guys. <laughs>